Hello. In this video, I'll tell you about the discovery of electrons. In previous videos, I talked about the discovery of an atom, how Democritus coined the term atomos and uh, how, he, how he said that it was the smallest particle of matter and atomos means it was uncuttable. Dalton then gave his atomic theory where he said that atoms are actually the smallest particles of matter and atoms of different elements are different from each other in their masses but atoms of the same element are identical and that atoms of different elements they combine together to form atoms uh, compound atoms now which we today we know, uh, know as compounds but this was in 1808 when scientists did not know about subatomic particles as the century progressed in about the by the end of the century in 1897 jj thompson and other scientists they have, were working on atoms and they were trying to find out what atoms they wanted to find out the properties and wanted to learn about atoms and wanted to know the structure of an atom so they were carrying out lots of experiments thompson carried out an experiment in a discharge tube I would like you to imagine the discharge tube to be somewhat like a tube light that you have in your homes. The tube light is uh, a glass tube and it has got a fluorescent coating on it which is and when it lights up you can see the light the fluorescent screen lights up and you see it and the two ends of the tube light they've got metallic um, what discs which uh, are in the end and which are connected to the uh, electric source and they produce the electricity and which produces the beam of light and which illuminates the tube light in the same way he used this discharge tube which was like a tube light and it had an opening here which was connected to the vacuum pump so what did he do that he took a gas in this like hydrogen and he connected the two electrodes were called the cathode and the anode this is called the cathode because it was connected to the negative terminal of the battery or the source of electric current and the positively charged electrode was known as the anode. What did he do? When he took hydrogen, he passed electric current through the hydrogen at one atmospheric pressure. And when he did that, he noticed nothing happened. So what did he do? He now reduced the pressure of the gas and he brought it down to 0 0.01 that is he brought it down to uh, down a hundred times of atmospheric pressure and he increased the voltage of current to about a thousand volts and he found again that nothing happened so he did not give up he now increased the voltage to about 10,000 volts and he brought down the pressure of the gas to 0 0.001 atmospheric pressure now what did he notice that there was a beam of light or there was something which was being given out a beam from the cathode and it was moving towards the anode and how did he learn about it he could not see this beam but behind the anode perhaps there was a hole in the uh, anode he found that behind the anode the screen which was uh, coated with the fluorescent material it got illuminated this was if you know that it is the cathode ray tube which is present in your television screens which produces the images on your television screens too even today the television screen is coated with the fluorescent material and cathode ray tubes it is those which give out the beams and they get illuminated and you see your images so the same thing happened and he noticed that there was a uh, there was an illumination behind the anode Obviously, if the illumination was behind the anode, the ray must be coming from the cathode. So he called this the cathode ray. Now what did he do? He wanted to know about the properties of this cathode ray. What was it? Where was it coming from? And what was the source of it? What was its nature? So what did he do? He took another discharge tube and this time the discharge tube was not where the metallic uh, discs were around the ends. He wanted to know about this ray. So he took a discharge tube which was somewhat like this. You can imagine this to be somewhat like a soda bottle. Do you see this? Like a soda bottle. And if you imagine this soda bottle, he had these metallic discs 
which were which were the electrodes so he had one disc here which acted as the cathode and one disc here which acted as the anode a disc here and a disc here which acted as the cathode and anode and the anode had a hole in it so now when he did this what did he uh, do when he passed the electric current through it that is 10,000 volts and the pressure was very low he noticed that the cathode ray was produced and it was traveling in a straight line he said that whatever this ray is it is being produced by the cathode now he wanted to know its nature he wanted to know do all substances produce the cathode ray so what did he do he changed the gas inside the tube the discharge tube when he changed the gas, he still got the same uh, ray. Then he swapped the metal of the two electrodes. And then he passed the electric current and he found he still found the cathode ray. And now what did he do? To know the nature, he took two metallic plates. And these metallic plates were electrical plates. They were, they were the two terminals. And he brought these two metallic plates above and below the discharge tube. When he did that, he was subjecting the ray to an electric charge. And when he did that, what did he notice? He noticed that the cathode ray, it, it deviated and it bent towards the positively charged uh, plate. What did this indicate? It indicated we know that electrical charges, like charges, repel each other and opposite charges attract each other. Therefore, he concluded from this that cathode rays, they consist of particles which should be negatively charged. Why? Because it was moving towards the positive electrical charge. But he still wanted to make sure. So what did he do now? He took, uh, let us say that this was the uh, discharge tube and he took a magnet. And this time he subjected the discharge tube to a magnetic field. And when he subjected it to a magnetic field and not the electric field, what did he notice this time? When he subjected it to a magnetic field, he again noticed that the cathode rays, they moved towards the other direction and they moved in that direction which would be expected or if of any ray which is negatively charged. So the behavior that the cathode ray was showing in the presence of electrical and magnetic fields was those of negatively charged substances or negatively charged particles. So and since he swapped the metal of the cathode ray tube, he said that whatever be the substance, we still got the same ray from different electrodes, from different gases. Therefore, all matter should consist of this negatively charged particle. Then through some other experiments, he found out that the mass of this uh, particle is a thousand times less than the mass of hydrogen. But by now, scientists felt that hydrogen was the smallest atom and there could be nothing smaller than an atom. That's what Dalton had said. But this revealed that an atom consisted of something which was smaller than an atom and even hydrogen, since he took hydrogen, there was something which was smaller than the hydrogen. Obviously, it would have been given out by the atoms. So he said, and since on switching the different elements, he found the same results. He said, all atoms of different elements consist of a negatively charged particle and he called this particle the electron. But then he said, if an atom consists of electrons, then what should an atom look like? On the whole, he knew an atom is neutral. And since on the whole an atom is neutral, the atom he imagined should be somewhat like this, like a plum pudding. Like in a pudding you have plums, the negatively charged electrons are present as plums in a pudding and the custard is like the positively charged mm, is like a positively charged uh, medium in which the negatively charged electrons are just embedded like the seeds in watermelon or like raisins uh, in a cake so he imagined that the positive and negative charges are equal and therefore an atom should look somewhat like this like a uh, like the plum pudding and therefore this was known as the jj thompson's plum pudding model Although this was just a rudimentary idea, today we know an atom does not look like this, but this was the model proposed by Thomson. 
So, in the next video, we'll be doing how were the other subatomic particles discovered and we'll study about the structure, the story of the building up of the structure of an atom. Thank you for watching.